Hello friends, this is Dr. Sangeeta and welcome back to another lecture of Dental Patshala where we help you understand and learn dentistry better and easy way. And today's topic we are going to talk about a fluid filled sac which is the cyst. So without further ado, let's get started. Hello friends, welcome back to our 10 in 10 series where we cover each topic under 10 headings in 10 minutes and today's topic is the Dentigerous Cyst and before we get started, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss any of our future videos. So talking about the Dentigerous Cyst, also known as the Follicular Cyst or the Periconolar, Coronal Cyst. So always first point is extracting something out of the term. So the term as the name suggests, the Dentigerous or the Follicular Cyst. So as we know when the tooth erupts, so outside the tooth we have follicle, right? So this is the follicle. So this is basically a cyst that is developed in the follicular area. This is due to the expansion of the follicle and which is attached to the neck of the teeth. So this kind of cyst, dentigerous cyst, it is seen in the unerupted crown, unerupted tooth and which is developed by the expansion of the follicle. So that is why it is known as the follicular cyst or the pericoronal cyst. Now talking about the pathogenesis, it can be studied under two uh, theories. First one is the intrafollicular theory, second one is the extrafollicular theory. Now this is developed from reduced enamel epithelium. So this inside layer you can see is the inner enamel epithelium. This outer layer is the outer enamel epithelium. So what happens in case of intrafollicular theory? In this there is an accumulation of fluid which occurs in the reduced enamel epithelium that is be between the inner enamel epithelium and the outer enamel epithelium in between this where stellate reticulum is there. Like when once we have talked about in the in the starting of the videos, I hope that I have covered that video in which the outer enamel epithelium, inner enamel epithelium in between there is a stellate reticulum. Now what happens? This is like a, this deflates, the stellate reticulum deflates and both the upper, outer enamel epithelium, inner enamel epithelium, they unite each other. As a, they uh, combine each other. So that is the reduced enamel epithelium. I guess we have covered in one of the perio videos. So this reduced enamel epithelium, there is a cyst formation which is between this reduced enamel epithelium which is the intrafollicular. Now it occurs, there is a fluid accumulation within the enamel organ. So, it, by the degradation, when the degradation of stellate reticulum, it occurs at early stages of the development. So, that will result in the cyst formation associated with the enamel hypoplasia. So, this is the intrafollicular. That means, intrafollicular means in the follicle, right? Between the outer enamel epithelium and the inner enamel epithelium, this green color dots you can see is the cystic space. Now, coming to the sex, second theory is the extra follicular extra follicular that means accumulation of fluid is between the unerupted see all of these teeth are inside the bone they are unerupted teeth so this um, accumulation of fluid between the unerupted tooth and the reduced uh, ree so it is between the tooth and the reduced enamel epithelium that is if you can see from the diagram from between the tooth and the inner enamel epithelium, the cystic space in case of extra follicular. Now talking about the demographic, so basically what happens, there is an initiation. Initiation, it is from reduced enamel epithelium most of the time. But for extra follicular, it can be the cell rest of serine. Okay, then there is a proliferation, then the proliferation takes place. So there is intra, again intra follicular, uh, the degeneration of the stellate reticulum, Right, so then the cyst enlargement happens. So the cyst keeps on growing in the size. So either due to osmolarity or due to bone resorption. So all these factors which we have covered in the previous video. Talking about the demographics. Now second and third decade of the life is the most frequently seen with the dentigerous cyst. And also both the sexes are involved. So most common in again also in the previous video we have, okay, see we have covered mandible. The cyst is seen more. Maxilla cyst is seen less because dentigerous, see you have to use your common sense for dentigerous cyst. Always remember, it is associated with the follicular cyst. Follicle is present when the tooth is not erupted. While the tooth is erupting, then we have the erupt 
eruption cyst like which is seen in the children if you have if you have seen any eruption cyst now what happens in case of dentigerous cyst this is a follicular cyst this is when the teeth is inside the bone this is associated with the impacted teeth so the most common impacted teeth in the mandible third molar in the maxilla canine so that is the reason the mandibular th it is associated with mandibular third molar most frequently and in the maxilla it is associated with the cyst in the canine what happens when the cyst is enlarging so when there is a continued enlargement of the cyst initially a pain is not associated generally it is painless it may be painful when it is infected so basically clinically you will differentiate in the radiograph because when the tooth is missing when any tooth is impacted there may be some swelling uh, so then you can correlate in the radiograph you can see there is a covering above the tooth impacted tooth and circling the impacted tooth unerupted teeth so what happens when there is a continued cystic enlargement it will cause the expansion of the bone this expansion of the bone will cause swelling and there will be facial asymmetry which is observed now when the also when the cyst continues enlarging right so there is going to be resorption of the bone resorption of the root of adjacent teeth and in extreme cases it is even going to displace the adjacent tooth and this again when it is infected it causes the pain now all the syn syndromes associated with the dentigerous cyst are mc remember mc so m is our marotolemi syndrome so this is basically heart disease uh, this is seen in the children now the children with the marotolemi syndrome have heart disease associated in the uh, small age so the next one is the credocranial dysplasia that we will cover in the different video so radiographic appearance when we look at the radiograph there is going to be a radiolucency around the impacted or the unerupted teeth with the hyperostotic borders which are seen so well defined radiolucency is seen but if it is infected then with there can be ill defined or hazy borders but otherwise the the swelling uh, the radio density the radiographically it is well defined now what happens when the cyst is enlarged so much it can go close to the maxillary antrum or the maxillary sinus and then it may displace also the maxillary sinus talking about the radiographical types so we have well uh, so topic uh, radiographical type we have the central type lateral type and circumferential type as you can see from the diagram the first one uh, in this diagram is the central type so this is the crown which is enveloped symmetrically so this is a basically this cyst is a symmetrically cyst which is enveloping the whole of the crown right then the lateral so as the name suggests the lateral will involve one side of the neck of the tooth but it is not involving the occlusal surface as you can see this is the cyst as you can see it is not involving the occlusal surface it is only involving the neck of the tooth from one side so that is why reason name suggests lateral then the third one we have is the circumferential type circumferential type is going to circumference the it is going to surround the entire tooth but it is joined at the neck of the tooth except the occlusal surfaces occlusal surfaces there is no attachment only the neck of tooth attachment is there so you have to draw the diagram this is the th according to thoma also we have morshed classification in which we have class 1 and class 2 so class 1 where there is a cyst associated with a completely unerupted teeth so when the tooth is impacted in the bone then this is class 1 according to according to morshed according to morshed type 2 is when the cyst is associated with the partially erupted teeth so in the class 1 also there are three sub classes that we don't require to read right next coming to the uh, histopathological so we have to write just the one radiographical type which is the important the thoma so that is the central lateral and circumferential now talking about histopathologically if we look at the lining of the epithelium if you can see the lining of the epithelium there are usually flat cells or there can be cuboidal cells also now two to four layers of cells are there and this lining is non keratinized Un, um, uh, not like okc in okc we had k for keratin so in the okc we had the lining of keratin but in the case of dentigerous cyst this lining is non keratinized right there are no red apexes also and if you look at the connective tissue now this lining actually resembles the ree reduced enamel epithelium 
so if you look at the connective tissue then connective tissue and there may be actually neoplastic changes also but that is very rare so coming to connective tissue connective tissue we have odontogenic islands as you can see this odontogenic island or odontogenic nest we say so there are thin fibrous cyst wall which are derived from the dental follicle and we have some small 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 epithelial cells gathered together we call the island right so then the cystic lumen as you can see there is little bit of blood so the cystic lumen can also actually it is watery thin watery but there may be the blood tangled with the cystic lumen talking about treatment the small lesion surgical enucleation large lesion we have to do the marsupialization so this is about the dentigerous cyst and it may complicate to form the ameloblastoma so guys this is about the dentigerous cyst i hope that you have enjoyed the video so if you have enjoyed the video then give it a thumbs up also you can comment in the comment section below and there is a link in the description below now to support me on paytm as well as on paypal to make free videos for you guys and to make free notes available to you as soon as possible so guys till then keep reading keep studying keep learning stay motivated and i'll see you soon in the next video